The Mets and Rays have both called up top prospects. Have the Yankees made another change at closer? Lock on in as Matt and I provide you with must-add players on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source for fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino, here as always with my brother, my co-host, my partner in crime, Matthew Ane. What's up, guys? Let's do this thing. You can find us on all social media platforms and podcasting apps. Just search for Locked On Fantasy Baseball, and we'll be there. Also, if you're watching on a platform, you know, like Apple or Spotify that allows five star ratings and reviews, we would truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. And if you're watching on the YouTube um, and you haven't already hit that little bell below, it subscribes to the channel. It also you know, gives you a notification every time we drop a new episode. Once again, if you're on YouTube, also be sure to like and comment because we love to talk fantasy baseball with you. Before we jump into today's episode, though, we want to thank you for your support. It's truly, truly appreciated. Matt and I are turning that corner almost at 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, and we couldn't have it done it without each and every one of you. If you enjoy our show and want to help us out, please share our podcast with a few friends who also love fantasy baseball or baseball in general. We'd truly be grateful for your support in this journey to reach 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. But Locked On Fantasy Baseball fans, we have a fully loaded episode for you. Let us be your team's secret weapon, as always, as we're going to provide you with must-add players heading into the weekend and for next week. So, up first, Matt, we got a couple of young bucks. Which one are we going to go with first, brother? Uh, Let's go with Mr. Matt McLean. Probably the most exciting prospect to be called up yet this year. And McLean, already, already, also 44% on, has already made a state... uh, Made a statement, already got two hits out of eight, so doing a good job at about 250 right now on the year with it through two games. Got two runs and a rib, so he's already looking to make a make a mark on that team. You know, the Reds really need that influx of talent, and quite honestly, I think he can because if you look at what he was doing this year in the minors, right? Um, I mean, shoot, let's go, right? Like, so he had a hundred uh, 138 at bats. He had 30 runs, 12 doubles, a triple, 12 bombs, 40 ribs, 10 stolen bases, batting 348 on the year. Th- those numbers are spectacular. And the year before in 2022, sheesh, my guy had freaking 371 at bats. He had 67 runs, 21 doubles, five triples, 17 bombs, 58 ribbies, and 27 stolen bases. Batting average was a little down, but I think my guy was just having a little struggling year because the year before he batted about 283. So I think the batting average is legit. The stolen bases potential is completely there. And it seems like the kid's got a little dual threat possibly with the power. So if this if he's able to come forward and do this kind of work, McLean could be, you know, like John McLean on, on Christmas Eve crawling through the air duct, saving everybody. And, you know, he's going to be part of the Christmas movie of the year. So, you know, you might want to hop in on Matt McLean because Matt McLean could be a great pickup this year. Yeah, man, I, I was I was waiting for the John McLean reference there because that that is a that is a stellar one here with Matt McLean. You covered him super super well. I'm just gonna add that he's been batting second so far through his first two games, so that's very exciting for Matt McLean. He's shortstop eligible, as Matt mentioned, 44% owned on Yahoo. Not really much I can add here, except uh, I might be a little bit of a skeptic. You know, he's um, only had 38 games in AAA, and they all came this year. Let's just see where things go with him. I think right now you pick him up, you stash him, you see where things go. You don't necessarily have to start him every single day, but I'd say right now is the time to put him on your team because if he starts picking it up, he's only going to get that 44% is going to go to 70 and 80 really, really fast for Matt McLean, Cincinnati Red shortstop. Let's move on to our next guy here, uh, somebody that just got the call, and it's Mark Vientos of the New York Mets. And, you know, he got a little cup of coffee last year. The numbers really weren't, uh, you know, blow-you-away type numbers last year. Vientos played 16 games for the Mets, 
36 at-bats, three runs, six hits overall, one double, one home run, three RBIs, and he batted 167. But, you know, uh, Viento said, you know what, I'm going to show the Mets uh, this year why, you know, I need to be called up and be a part of this team because this year in the minors, Vientos had 38 games, 141 at-bats, 26 runs, 11 doubles, 13 home runs, 37 RBIs, and he was hitting 333. Throughout uh, Vientos' minor league career, he's always been a solid batting average guy. Over the last few years, he showed a little bit of pop with 25 home runs in 2021 and only 83 games. In 2022, um, Vientos had 24 home runs in 101 games. So there's some pop in that, you know, bat. The the thing that's a little, uh, you know, um, uh, let's, what's the right word to use here? That's a little bit stinky is that Vientos is only utility eligible right now. I'm not sure where the, where the Mets are. You know, they're probably going to play him at a few different positions. He was batting eighth today. He's 0 for 2 so far. I'm not sure exactly where they're looking to put him right now as far as where he's going to play. But um, Luis Guillorme got, um, you know, sent down to make the room for him. So let's uh let's just see where it's gonna go. Looks like he might play more against lefties than righties. The Mets have been very you know iffy with uh what they're doing with their prospects so far this year. You know with Francisco Alvarez, I said oh he's not gonna play DH. He's gonna play DH. So you know that's been a whole mess. The Brett Beatty debacle of Brett Beatty not you know being called up uh, at the start of the year and they waited a little bit on him. You know he wasn't necessarily playing every single day. So I don't know if Vientos is gonna play every single day. He's definitely behind Matt McLean. You know eleven percent owned on Yahoo once again. Mark Vientos. He's somewhere in the lower end of the guys that that I'm excited about for today's episode. But I am a fan of Vientos, and uh, I'm not rushing out there to pick him up. But uh, you could definitely add him if you you know like the numbers and you're in desperate need of another bat on your team. Yeah, and I mean, so like, yeah, he's 11 percent owned, so you probably don't have to run out and get him like Dom said. But I do like the power upside, and I already talked about playing him over Volgabot because he's been playing like absolute garbage. Like, <laughs> so. That's where that DH spot may go. Um, so right now, maybe lefties, but if he starts mashing the ball and they give him a shot against righties and he proves himself, he could totally work himself into a full-time UT. He also did play a little third baseman down in the minors. So, you know, maybe they will find a way to get him in there on, on rest days for whoever's playing third at the time. So it's probably a, a way to go here. Um, but yeah, so... Before we move on here, talk about Manny Machado's replacement since he went down right before the podcast start with a fractured hand, which would be Nick Senzel. And then we'd be talking about CJ Abrams and Michael Conforto. So stay tuned for that. But Dom's got somebody great to talk about. Yes, I sure do. Today's episode is sponsored by the clothing company Bird Dogs. Looking for clothes that redefine comfort and style? Look no further than Bird Dogs. They've crafted the perfect blend of performance and fashion to bring you shorts, pants, and tops that will revolutionize your wardrobe. With stretchy fabric that makes your legs look great, they're not only stylish but also comfier than any other shorts or pants that you currently own. They give you the freedom to wear one pair of shorts or pants on the golf course, to a meeting, on a date, or even if you're just going to hang out with your friends. Bird Dogs just sent Matt and I some shorts and we're absolutely obsessed with them. Man, I got a few compliments on them. I wore them over the weekend and I I think they're very, very stylish. So I'm a huge fan of Bird Dogs. I might have to grab myself some more Bird Dogs gear in the upcoming couple of weeks. So you can just head to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. And when you enter the promo code locked on MLB, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. So try Bird Dogs clothing today. Also, as always, we want to thank our everydayers and new listeners for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. Be sure to be on the lookout for a new episode tomorrow featuring arms to pitch and ditch over the weekend and a few for next week as well. But guys, let's get back into this. As Matt mentioned, we're going to talk about Nick Senzel. So brother, you want to give us a little thought on him here? Yes, sir. So Mr. Nick Senzel, obviously we all need a replacement for Manny Machado. Unfortunately, he's going to be going down. And hand fracture is never good because, you know, that's going to be weeks at a time. Probably, if I had to take a guess, most likely, I'm going to say uh, four to six weeks at a minimum. And then it's probably going to take him a little time to get back to what he's doing. So Nick Sincel is a great ad right now with 24% owned. I mean, he's been smashing the ball since he's, you know, started get, started getting his move on and groove on in the league. And he has 102 at-bats. He has 18 runs. He has uh, five doubles, four bombs already, 18 ribs, three stolen bases, and batting 275 on the year with a 792 OPS. 
Also, too, I mean, his last two weeks have looked pretty good. Um, last week he had three runs, a bomb, four ribs, a stolen base, batting 300. So, I mean, it, he's right now, you know, you're going to, you know, beggars can't be choosers off the waiver wire when it comes to third baseman. Nick Senzel can probably give you that little plus, a little, you know, replacement so you can find a little bit more of a sturdy replacement if he's not going to be the answer for you. Who knows? Maybe Nick Senzel has figured it out um, after being somebody that was, you know, a pretty hyped up prospect when he was getting the call, I think, two or three years ago. And now maybe he's kind of figured it out. Let's see. I, I kind of fell asleep on him. So I'm hoping that maybe he can make that bounce back and maybe Nick Senzel can be that guy for you in the short term. So, you know, definitely check him out and maybe probably pick him up, in my opinion. Yeah, if you're if your waiver wire is looking a little bit thin and you have Manny Machado, as I mentioned, he's you know gonna be out a while with that, you know, hand issue. Uh you give you can give Nick Senzel a try. I'm not super huge on him because you know the Cincinnati Reds team themselves isn't a great team, so the counting stats aren't probably gonna be great. He's not really a power guy, but the speed and batting average is where it's at. Like if you missed out on picking up an Estuary Ruiz earlier in the season. And you need a couple of steals. You need your batting average boosted. I think you give Nick Senzel that shot. Uh, you know, as Matt mentioned, the batting average is pretty good at 275 so far this year. He's got three steals in 29 games. Uh, the plate discipline's not bad, actually. 11 walks to 21 strikeouts. And, you know, Nick Senzel's always been uh, known for his plate discipline in the minors. Uh, the last seven days, Nick Senzel, six for 20, three runs, one home run, four RBIs, one steal. And that batting average is good for 300. So, you know, you give Nick Senzel the shot if there's, you know, not really too many other options. Uh, he might be on the, the bottom of the barrel as far as all the guys we're talking about today, in my opinion. But I do like Nick Senzel as a you know, replacement for Manny Machado. If you don't really have much out, uh, else out there, 15-man leagues, NL only leagues, uh, stuff like that, you definitely give Nick Senzel the shot. Let's talk about somebody I'm actually a little bit more excited about, and that's C.J. Abrams of the Washington Nationals. Now, C.J. Abrams was, you know, a highly touted prospect. He was behind guys like, you know, Riley Green and, uh, you know, a few, you know, Casas and guys like that. But he was very, very highly thought of, you know, before, you know, he came up to the, you know, big leagues. And he, you know, as Matt would say, he uh, crapped his big boy pants and really did nothing. But back in 2022, he had seven bombs. He had 14 steals, batted 310 in 38 games in the minors. And once again, that's seven bombs and 14 steals in 38 games. So he was finally starting to, you know, um, do his thing as a 21-year-old. Then it's tough. You know, you transition from a team like the Padres that are a winning team. You go over to the Washington Nationals that are not, you know, one of the better teams. And, uh, you know, you're not necessarily motivated to, you know, get out there and, you know, play the best every day. You know, like we talked about that with Juan Soto a lot, you know, who's uh, turning it around himself, Mr. Soto. You know, he's getting uh, his boy Tatis is back and, you know, they're just out there, you know, doing great things. But let's talk about C.J. Abrams over the last couple of weeks. Or actually, let's talk about just the last week specifically. Six for 20, three runs, two home runs, five RBIs, a steal, batting 300. And he's second base and shortstop eligible on Yahoo, 28% owned for CJ Abrams. I think there's a lot of speed in that bat. And um, where has he been hitting in the lineup of late? He's been hitting ninth, which is necessarily not a bad spot to be hitting in the lineup because then you know what? You get driven in a lot by the top of the lineup. So I think he could, CJ Abrams could be good for runs. He could be, you know, he's got a little power in that bat. It's not going to be plus, but it will keep you, you know, it will keep you in the in the game. I think he could break out in steals. I think he could have a good amount of steals this year, maybe like 30 plus steals if he keeps it up. Batting average could come up to like 260, 270. And CJ Abrams could be a nice little pickup if you lost Jazz Chisholm who's also going to be out for a while. You know, what is it, like four to six weeks for Jazz? I think turf toe for Jazz Chisholm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm about to give up to Jazz Chisholm. I think he's got himself a room in the, the Flanges department right next to our boys uh, Byron Buxton and Al Alberto Mondesi. But, Matt, uh, what do you think of C.J. Abrams, brother? Um, you know, Jazz Chisholm, I already mailed a uh, pair of crutches. Uh, but oh, there you go. Good, good. Did you, si did you sign it for me, too? Was, was my name yeah. on there? Oh, yeah, no. It was a locked on fantasy baseball gift. Good, good, the good. card said, welcome to the month Yes. Anyway, yes. Uh, CJ, you know, definitely check him out. You know, I'm not running to go get him, but I mean, hey, there's injuries yeah. and we got to fill hole and manufacture wins. So he's off to a hot start. Might as well just take it, ride the wave until it goes. But let's talk about something that's really like smoking the ball right now. And that's Mr. Michael Conforto. I mean, he this last week was just absolutely mind-blowing. Six runs, four bombs, eight ribs, batting 440. With an OPS of one four six zero, like that solid, thirty three percent owned right now. I mean, you can't you can't help but love 
love it. You know, Michael Conforto was drafted this year and dropped pretty much, you know, within the first couple of weeks of baseball because he really wasn't living up to the hype because he's batting 222 on the year. So I get it. But now it looks, seems like he's having a little resurgence. And I don't know about long term value, but I mean, he did get the bag of money and he's on a new team. Maybe he's figuring it out now and deciding to smoke the ball again. So let's see what happens. He's never really been a power guy. I never would have thought I would be saying Michael Conforto got four home runs in a week. <laughs> he's got some power. He's got some power. Uh, last year with eight home runs. I mean, 120. Actually, that's not bad. But anyway. 33 home runs, 2019, 28 and 2018. I mean, that was how many years ago now, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah, it's about like four years ago. But anyway. Yeah, no, you know. No. So, like, Michael Conforto is Michael Conforto, but right now I'm going to ride that wave. I'm going to scoop him up wherever he's available just based on the fact that the production I'm going to be able to get. And if Michael Conforto can somehow miraculously hop in the time machine and, you know, heal his body and be able to get back to 33 home runs, then sheesh, it's going to be a great waiver wire pickup. So, you know, definitely check out Michael Conforto and use that hot run. You know what the funny thing is? Almost out of everyone that we talked about, I, I – kind of like him the most tim and mclean are, are close to me because i think mclean has a lot of upside but everyone we talked about today conforto just you know former all-star as i mentioned that 2019 season he had 90 runs uh, 29 doubles 33 home runs 92 rbi seven steals hit 257 over 151 games for the mets and you know he's been a former all-star he's only 30 years old you know people might be fatigued with uh, michael conforto because he didn't play all of last year i forget what the exact injury was uh that made that caused him to miss the whole season but he didn't play at all last year and there is upside here it's you know maybe it took him a little bit to bounce back after you know missing a whole season you know it takes you a little bit to get back in the groove of things especially with baseball being one of the toughest sports in you know the whole world I think Conforto's just got a lot of upside. He's currently 33% owned on Yahoo. I think it's I think that's gonna jump. I think he's gonna, you know, jump up to 60% owned before you know it. So go check your waiver wire for Conforto. You know, he's on the Giants now, outfielder. And Matt Reggie off the, the numbers for the past week. He's been absolutely red hot. He's already got eight home runs this year in 38 games. So I wouldn't be shocked if he, you know, approaches 30 or even surpasses 30. He's a career 253 hitter. So he's like a Kyle Schwarber, Kyle Schwarber light. But um, up next, you know, we got um, – we're going to move into pitchers here. And uh, one of our boys is back, and I know I'm super excited about him. It is the Taj Mahal Bradley. Right, we kind of talked about him, and I believe it was the stash, you know, episode. So if you went out there and stashed him, you're probably excited about him getting the call back up. It is against the Mets, and the Mets have been a little bit better. Pete Alonso's heating back up, you know, Lindor's been playing a little bit better. But let's talk about what Taj Bradley did in the majors across his first three starts. He won all three of them, went three zero with the three five two ERA, fifteen innings, twenty three strikeouts, only two walks, and a an oh nine one WHIP. I think he's going to be excited to get the call back up. I heard that they were messing with his pitch mix, uh, pitch mix down in the minors, and that's why he's got the inflated ERA down there. And I think he's just going to come back up. And even if they are trying to mess with him, he's going to be like, no, I got this. I'm going to prove why I need to stay in this rotation for the rest of the year. They're down um, Drew Rasmussen and Jeffrey Springs, who are both having monster years. So there's no reason they shouldn't keep the 22-year-old Taj Bradley in the rotation. Let me just grab his ownership percentage for you real quick. Quick, Hodge Bradley is 39% owned on Yahoo. I think he's an immediately uh, must add before, you know, F goes back up to 70, 80%. Yeah, absolutely. Add the Mahal, add the, add the genius, because I think he's going to be a great, great steal here. And before we move on with pitching and all our wonderful names, such as Wandy Peralta, Dane Dunning, Ed Dunning, and Jack Flaherty, I have somebody great I need to speak talk to you about it's our new sponsor so rare it's a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 mlb teams unlike other fantasy baseball platforms so rare managers truly own their fantasy experience collecting buying selling competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards win or lose you still own your cards and you, there's no cost to play so Rare recently partnered with MLB stars Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez to serve as brand ambassadors. Both are featured in So Rare current uh, campaigns and will engage with the So Rare community throughout the MLB season. Head, uh, head to SoRare.com slash locked on. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com to draft your team today of free player cards 
set your lineup and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's so rare.com slash locked on to start playing today. I absolutely love the game. I'm completely hooked. So make sure you check that out. All right. So I said we got another name for you, and that's Mr. Wandy Peralta. I mean, he's an interesting name. I am a little uh, thrown around here because my stat disappeared on him, funny enough. <laughs> but, uh, you know, got to love it. You go and hit this. But Mr. Wandy Peralta, great closer here for the uh, New York Yankees. As we mentioned at the top of the episode, there is a new closer here. So looks like he got the first, the save and a uh, first save. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. One, two, three saves over the last one, two, four, five, six games, which is phenomenal. Uh, I think you know what this Yankee this Yankee bullpen is going to be kind of mixed around until they kind of see what's going on, and could all change the second Boone gets fired. We'll see. Uh, one can only dream. But anyway, you know we'll see what happens. Wandy seems to be getting rolled out in the in the ninth, and I, I'm all about it. He's handling his business. He hasn't gotten lit up, and I mean, yeah, he's not the K guy like King is, and you know Clay Holmes really wasn't either. So you know you're pretty much getting the you know, B to Clay Holmes if he's got the job. You know, not a lot of K's, but you're going to get the save. And he's not going to destroy your ERA. So, Wadi Peralta, in my opinion, at least is a must add right now, just based off the fact that the opportunities and with the Yankees are going to be able to put Wandy in for success. Yeah, I'm, it's interesting here. I don't know if, if I'm ready to declare him the new official closer, but he does have three out of the last four saves uh, for the Yankees. King got mixed in there for one. So I just know it doesn't seem like Boone wants to throw Clay Holmes back out there in the ninth anymore. So I think it's the battle between Wandy and Michael King. I think Boone's going to play the matchups there for a while. But, you know, Wandy Peralta's 22% owned on Yahoo right now. And I, I think it's worth a shot if you need a closure, if you're desperate for saves. Uh, go out there and see if Wandy's on your wave wire or add him for now. I know the whip isn't great at a one three four, but the ERA is a one six five. You know, he's got a, over, a little over a K per nine. So let's see where things go with Wandy Peralta here in the New York Yankees. Well, we all know that the Yankees need to step it up and pick it up. So I think Boone is going to be mixing things up and trying to figure out what's going to be, uh, be working here. Worst case scenario, you picked Wandy up and he doesn't really, you know, uh, grab this job by the horns and go with it. You cut him for the next guy. And, you know, here at Locked on Fantasy Baseball, we're going to keep, always keep you posted with uh, new closer information. Let's move on to the next guy here, though, and uh, this is a name I did not think that I'd be talking about this year. It's Dane Dunning. I remember back in the day when Dane Dunning was with the White Sox and he was, you know, like pretty fantasy relevant and we used to, you know, I used to pick him up and, uh, you know, open my lineup here and there. But I don't know. Maybe it's the maybe it's the Jacob deGrom effect that's uh, causing him to really, you know, um, just go out there and dominate this year. So on the year, Dane Dunning is 4-0 uh, with – Three starts, but it's 11 games overall. It came out of the bullpen for a few games this year. 169 ERA for Dunning, 37 innings, 23 strikeouts, and a 0884 whip. Like I said, it's kind of reminding me when he got that cup of coffee with the White Sox in 2020. Looks like he's getting back to that type of form. And when you got guys like John Gray and DeGrom and just those vets out there of all the uh, pitching well in Texas, they're probably rubbing off there on Dunning and showing him, you know, a thing or two about, you know, what he needs to do to get it done. He's currently 43% owned on Yahoo, so he's available in a good amount of leagues. He gets Pittsburgh next time, which has cooled off, you know, dramatically uh, since that, you know, hot start to the season. But what really made me want to throw Dunning on this list was his last start against the Atlanta Braves on May 16th. He went six innings, got the win, four strikeouts, gave up one run, and had a one whip. So Dane Dunning, you know, he everyone was like, oh, maybe he's not the real deal this time. But he's going out there and handled that good uh, Atlanta Braves team. So I'm excited to see what Dane Dunning could do the rest of the season. He may not be the answer to, you know, your solution. But, hey, if you have him as, like, your sixth, seventh starting pitcher on your roster, you could definitely do a lot worse. Uh, I, li I like Dane Dunning. You should definitely give him a chance, at least for this next start against the Pirates. Yeah. I, you know what? Like After looking at Dane, I mean, he's not like he's going to blow you away with the numbers that – Right now, oh, yeah. it looks like looks like he's going to keep the ERA down. And, I mean, if he progresses on this, I mean, he's only, what, 28 years old, only been in the bigs a few years. So it, may, it does take a little time for pitchers to figure it out. So maybe he's figured it out, and you know, in the later years of his career, which, I mean, is what, three and a half years in the in the bigs. Maybe he might be able to do what he did in the minors where he would get, gets up to a K per nine. 
and maybe he does have some long term long term value. We shall see. But right now, he's at least doing his thing, so he's definitely an ad. But let's move on here. Um, let's talk about Mr. Jack Flaherty. Um, probably the most bipolar uh, performance that I've ever seen because my guy is up, he's down, he's up, he's down. You know, I don't know what to do with him. I just want to kind of just give him a little medicine to kind of just stay a little say a little sane. But I mean, it is what it is. But my guy, my guy had a really great start against Milwaukee. He went out, pitched seven, got the W, got ten Ks, no earned runs, and had a point seven um whip, a point seven one whip. Like that's a solid outing. But then he goes out the one before against Chicago, three Ks, five innings, five four ERA. Then against the Angels at thirty eight ERA. And he the Dod- that, yeah, and then dodges again, seven seven one, and in Seattle he had an okay one. He threw up the nine Ks at least, but he had a four or five ERA. So, like I said, he's a little bit of the bipolar because you don't know really what to do with him. But you also got to remember too, he's coming back from that shoulder injury that he pretty much much missed most of last season. So maybe he's trying to figure it out. Maybe he's got a new thing going on, but. The one thing you could always bank on is Jack Flaherty is going to strike a million people out. So even if he's going to, you know, exacerbate what your ERA is going to be, at least you're going to get the K numbers. And if your ERA is blown up going into the weekend, he's probably would have been better for tomorrow's episode on pitch and ditch. He would have been a great candidate because I don't, I don't see who his Sunday's matchup is because I see the Dodgers, which would be Saturday. And then that's really just about it. Guardians. Guardians. The Guardians. And, you know, with Ramirez possibly not in that lineup, I feel even better about rolling Jack Flaherty out there. You know, so, like, Flaherty could really take advantage of that matchup. And, um, you know, shout out to Ramirez and his loss. So, um, you know, wishes go out to you. Yeah, yeah, you know, shout out to Jose Ramirez. And um, with Jack Flaherty, Matt, you said it so well because that's the exact route that I was going to take. It's just that you don't – it's like the – if you guys watch Family Guy, it's like uh, the mystery box. It, it could be anything, you know. He could even be uh, Jack Flaherty. So, you know, I'm just like uh, – I don't know, man. I'm, I'm hoping that Jack Flaherty finds that old form of his first couple of years and, you know, like that, 29, that monster 2019 where everyone thought he was going to be an ace. And, you know, in 2021, he kind of flashed it again for the 78 innings he pitched to back in uh, 2021 Flaherty. 3-2-2 ERA, 15 starts, 78 innings, 85 strikeouts with a 106 whip. He's still only 27 years old, and as Matt mentioned, he's been had a lot of arm injuries over the last few years. I think maybe he's messing around with things, trying to figure out, you know, in this new age without the, you know, sticky stuff, how he's going to, you know, deal with um, that and just what his pitch mix is going to be, what's going to work for him. I don't know if I'm starting him against the Dodgers in his next start, but I will say this. If Flaherty does go out there against the Dodgers and he pitches good, this 33% is going to be 70% in a blink of an eye. So I think it's a preemptive ad right now with Jack Flaherty. You just kind of add him, and, you know, if you have the room, you have somebody you want to dump, uh, pick up Flaherty, throw him on the end of your bench. Unless you need, as Matt said, which was a great point, if you need the strikeouts, yeah, throw him out against the Dodgers. But I'm not I'm not Guardians. doing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing it unless I have to with Flaherty this weekend against the Dodgers. If Guardians. He does, yeah, uh, no, I'm saying on the 21st, his next start is against the Dodgers. Yeah, his next start is against the Dodgers. The oh. one after that is against the against the Guardians. So that's what I'm saying. If his next start against the Dodgers mm. is good, then that one after against the Guardians, you're definitely going to roll him out there. But let's see where this thing goes because you got to add him now. Because once again, that, if that Dodgers start is good, forget about it. He's you you'll you'll miss that chance to add him. But let's move on to our next guy. It's uh, Michael Waka. Waka waka and, waka. Uh, yeah, he's back to that old waka waka that you know that Cardinals waka where he was actually you know pretty good for a few years and he fell off, but you know he's back in our lives again and he's uh you know somebody you got to look to Ed. He's thirty eight percent owned on Yahoo over his last few starts, which is uh thirteen innings. He has fifteen strikeouts, two wins, o six nine ERA, and o six two WHIP. He gets up next the that Boston Red Sox team, which is kind of up and down. You know, they're they're better than you'd probably think. But I think Waka, after his last start against Kansas City with the seven innings, a win, eleven strikeouts, no earned, and o two nine whip, he's been rocking and rolling. There was only really two starts this year where he got lit up. It was against Milwaukee and uh, against Arizona. But if you remove those couple of starts, everything else looks pretty solid. Yeah, there was one or two that wasn't perfect. But you know what? I'll, I'll take the punches here with uh, Waka on the year. It's a 406 ERA, 117 whip, 44 innings, 41 Ks. 
And just an interesting guy. You know, uh, if you need a starting pitcher and let's say, you know, Taj Bradley's already gone and somebody grabs Flaherty out from underneath you, I think Waka is uh, somebody that you give them the shot. And on the San Diego team, which is a pretty good team right now, definitely could be worse. Once again, Waka, 38% owned on Yahoo. Uh, give him a shot. Let's see where this thing goes. Yeah, for sure. I uh, could walk a flock all the way to the finish line if he really does do it. <laughs> yes, sir. But Dom, great job there. I think you should just take it on and bring us on home. All right, brother. So that is all for today, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Check out our website if you already haven't. And just a huge thank you to our everydayers and new listeners for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. Be sure to look out for a new episode tomorrow featuring players to pitch and ditch over the weekend and maybe a few guys for next week as well. Just real quick, if you're still around, that must mean that you're a fan of ours and we truly, truly appreciate it if you could share our podcast with a friend or two or three as we try and approach that 2,000 subscriber mark here on YouTube. And we truly, truly appreciate all of you for you know making Locked On Fantasy baseball a part of your daily routine but until tomorrow folks see you